Hi! If you watched my recent vlog on Nico or are looking for tips on how to plan a trip in Nico, you've come to the right place. Nico is a charming, quaint town nestled in the mountains, rich with history and filled with gorgeous lakes and cascading waterfalls that will make your jaw drop. Here is a travel planning guide to this destination. The best time of year to visit this place is in the fall, which is usually from mid-October to November. Unfortunately, we were there ending September, early October, and so we only got a hint of the autumn foliage. But by visiting at the right time, you'll be able to be surrounded by the golden glow of the autumn painted mountains. So we stayed for three days and two nights, but really ventured for a total of two days worth. And after evaluating, that was not enough time. Ideally, I think four days is a good amount of time if you want to truly experience Nico. I think just doing a day trip is a waste because it does take some travel time to get to whether it be taking the Shinkansen or driving to. So there goes almost a third or half of your first day. If you're really short on time, I think at least just stay over one night. That way you can explore the town and at least check out the Lake Chizunji area. Nikko Pass. I highly recommend grabbing one because this pass will be your main mode of transportation getting around Nikko. Depending on what you want to see or do, there are two types of passes to choose from. One, the Nikko World Heritage Area Pass. This helps cover a round-trip train ride from Tokyo, Shinkansen ride not included, the unlimited bus rides in Nikko, and also train rides between Nikko and Kinogawa Onsen area. This is valid for two consecutive days. The other pass is the Nikko All Area Pass, which is what my friends and I used. I highly recommend getting this one. It basically covers the World Heritage Area Pass, plus areas to Kirifuri Kogen, the infamous Irohazaka Mountain Road of Switchbacks, and just past Lake Chuzenji all the way to Yomoto Onsen. This pass also covers a boat cruise ride at Lake Chuzenji. This is valid for 4 days. I forgot to mention also that there are discounts at certain places like the museums and attractions covered under both passes. You can find more information on the Tobu Top Tours website to get the passes. It looks like you can purchase them online or get them at the Asakusa Tobu Tourist Info Center. My friends and I physically went to the info center and bought it there the night before our departure. Special note, if you plan on taking the limited express train which is the Shinkansen, you will need to buy that separately from the Nikko Pass. The Nikko Pass only covers the part where you enter and exit the train station, usually where people scan the IC card or ticket in. But instead of going through that area, you go through the Tobu area where you show the workers your pass to get through. Also, I recommend that you book in advance your Shinkansen Limited Express tickets because they are reserved seats and they do get booked quickly. We rode different train models going to Nikko and coming back. Going to Nikko, we rode on the Kegon model with regular seating, and coming back to Asakusa, we rode the newest train model, the Spatia X. I recommend riding the Spatia X both ways. I wish I did that. The Kegon model, you could tell is old. It seemed a bit dirty, even in the bathroom, but I would take Spatia X both ways if possible. The prices were reasonably affordable. My total round trip fare only cost me about 28 US dollars. And that also included the premium seating with the Spatia X. Speaking of Spatia X, let me give you a tour of this new train. Spatia X started operating on July 15, 2023. The term X and the X design is inspired by the Edo Kumiko woodcraft, known to be in lattice-like patterns. There are six types of seats that you can choose. My friends and I sat in the premium seating, very wide and roomy all around. The armrest chair had a cup holder, a controller to recline your chair and if you want the reading light on. 
On the other armrest is like the airplane style folding tables that you take out when you want to eat or do some work on the table. The almond shape next to the headrest you see is where the reading light is. There are a couple places to store your luggage. Hand carry size luggage can be stowed above you and if you have large ones, you can go between the cars and you'll see a designated space to store your luggage at. There is a cafe where you can order snacks and drinks located in the cockpit lounge. The cockpit lounge you see is one of the fancier choices of seating out of the six options. We were able to just walk over to the bar and order there. Here are the bathrooms. There is one for each gender. Got this cool, it's like milk drops. So we'll see what this is, but this is a cool souvenir container to have. And then um, got Coke, crack Coke. It's Coke? Mm -hmm. I don't know what this is. It's like craft Coke. All right, so I tried it. I do you see dark things, but I think that's cinnamon. It's like, eh. Let me know if you guys know what this is, craft Coke. Ugh, it's like a dark spice towards the end when you drink it. Storage lockers. If you're traveling by train and your lodging check-in time is not till a couple hours more, have no fret, there are three places you can store your luggage. One, at the Tobu Nikko station. It is important that when you arrive at Tobu Nikko, do not go through the Tobu room or standard fare stands just yet. The large size lockers are right by the platform. We couldn't find these lockers when we arrived and so we had to go to our second choice. Small and medium size lockers are found upstairs. Another place at the Tobu Nikko station is the popular luggage transport service, Yamato, in the area on your left. The only junk thing is if you place your luggage with them, you need to pick up your luggage at 5pm the same day. Lastly, there's also luggage storage down the road, just a two-minute walk at the JR Nikko station. Hours of operation. Japan's businesses, including breakfast places, normally don't open until 11 to 11.30 a.m. In Nikko, lots of museums and attractions open pretty late in the day, so keep that in mind when you're making your itinerary. Find places like hiking spots or nature viewpoints that don't require waiting and use that to fill your early mornings. If you watched my Nico vlog, I clearly screwed up on the itinerary because of the odd hours of operation. One last tip, really study the bus system timetable to avoid wasting time trying to get around Nico. There is a timetable available when you get your Nico pass and it's also online. I'll most likely create another Nikko video on top places to visit, but I want to mention, definitely check out Kegon Falls. There is an elevator that takes you to the bottom which I think is mind-blowing. Kegon Falls is rated one of the top 3 waterfalls, so check that out when you have the chance. I hope you found this video helpful, and thanks for sticking around this long. Enjoy planning your trip to this beautiful place. Till the next one, aloha!